Hey everyone, welcome back to Keto and Crime for uh, day 15 or Monday, yesterday, beginning off week 4 of the Vallow trial. As I said there in my last video, court was in recess on Friday and they came back yesterday uh, for Monday. So if you're seeing this as soon as it's uploaded on Tuesday, this is the update uh, by virtue of the recordings released by East Idaho News and the transcripts released by East Idaho News. And then I make my own notes and kind of summarize it into digestible pieces for you. So today we continue with uh, testimony from law enforcement. Uh, we go into uh, many of the warrants issued for various uh, email addresses and other accounts uh, owned by Lori and Chad, as well as others connected with this scheme. And we kind of go over their findings. So it picks up with um, with Detective Stubbs, who was the last person on the stand on Thursday, and uh, Prosecutor Rachel Smith con continuing her direct exam. Uh, we also note that uh, Lori's sister, Summer Shiflett, is in the courtroom with her husband um, and her uncle. And his daughter. So even though they did speak briefly to Lori's lawyer, uh, they are sitting on the prosecutor's side, which leads us to believe that anything they say will be by virtue of the prosecution. So Stubbs begins by saying that he has analyzed hundreds of electronic devices and that he went through a myriad of different things owned by Lori uh, for this case. Um, there was at least 20 electronic search warrants issued, and they are broadcast on a screen for the courtroom, and he goes through them basically one by one. The most telling was um, the potential for 18 different phones that Lori and Lori's family might have owned uh, during the course of the saga, as well as burner phones, and uh, many, many things that Lori, when she abandoned her apartment in uh, Rexburg, she left behind. They were also to culminate at least um, five or six different uh, Gmail addresses, a couple owned by Alex Cox, others owned by others, and basically just phones and email addresses all over the place. The most telling warrant was the one issued after uh, Tylee and JJ's remains were found at the Daybell residence was a warrant to get the geolocator of the cell phones, uh, specifically Alex Cox's. And this is the famous um, documents we've seen where basically it sets up Alex's location being on the Daybell property the within a week of Tally and JJ's disappearance. Stubbs then goes on to explain burner phones, how even if you buy a burner phone at a Walmart, you still have to register it with an email address. So a lot of the different Gmail addresses associated with this saga, the saga were associated with burner phones, ones that don't have the traditional tracking and service that others have. You pay as you go, and but you can still be traced through the email addresses. And he says most cellular carriers carry extensive records people if you don't think you're not you're not being monitored by someone all the time you are i'm being monitored by virtue of using my online camera right now uh you're i'm being monitored by the searches that i do i'm being monitored by what i watch on tv what i look at on facebook what i look, buy on amazon we're all being monitored all the time privacy is honestly a thing of the past and in some ways this it's good when it comes to things like this, but not good for the everyday person. So you're being targeted by someone, and the government can get their hands on this stuff by request, usually. Then we look at a, a USB hard drive containing Chad Daybell's internet searches, as well as some discussion over two different email addresses, Lori for style at iCloud.com and LollyTime Forever at Gmail, which were both associated with Lori. Chad's searches were rather strange. Uh, he was looking for the wind direction, probably because something was being burned. I won't comment on what. And that uh, just different type of searches that were really, really strange. Also uh, associated with the Lolly Time email address was the frantic search 
for the wedding rings made of Malachi. This has something to do with their beliefs that this metal is precious and God loves this metal, so therefore he'll bless their marriage. But basically this all goes to a search for a size 11 and a half ring for Chad and a size 4.2 ring for Lori and they went to a lot of trouble evidently it was sold out they had to search around before they finally got those rings <clears throat> there was some discussion of Chad and Lori's movements in Hawaii as well as movements of them and various relatives around the time of Tammy Daybill's death and their wedding uh, hotels and things like that so just setting up the picture of the movements around the time of the disappearance of the children. But the last thing Detective Stubbs did clarify is that he had never seen anything specifically from Lori that says, I'm going to kill the kids, let's kill the kids, kill the kids. The prosecution wanted to put this forward, that that's not what they're basing this case for, and he confirmed he never saw any explicit orders from Lori to anybody to kill the kids. This is going to be a more of a reading between the line kind of situation. The defense has no questions for Stubbs at this time, but does retain the right to call him at a later time. So the judge does order him to remain under subpoena and to remain within reach of the court. Then a PowerPoint presentation is put up by the prosecution uh, showing various searches associated with various email addresses. When you use Google, when you use Chrome, uh, whatever your ma main Google account is, for me it is my YouTube account, that is the account that is pulled up by your browser and any internet searches you do are associated with that account. So we're going to go through a list of different searches associated with different people in the saga in a specific time period. So the first was chad.daybell at gmail.com and they went through searches from October 1st, 2018 through November 28th, 2019. And these were some of the things that were searched. Uh, Rhode Island area code, um, wind gusts, that was around the time that we suspect the children were buried and b burned and buried. The user searched when you surprise somebody with accusations, uh, Hippolyte, that was one of the demons associated with Charles Daybell. Uh, Malachi, Ebel, Malachi Jewelry, again trying to get them rings. And then uh, June 26 star sign, Cancer and Leo compatibility to be such a Christian, Chad. You sure were caught up in things of the occult, weren't you? And that is like astrology and stuff. And then uh, Ned Schneider, Louisiana obituary, 1997. This was again another demon name associated with Charles Vallow. Then there's uh, searches associated with the Lolly Time Forever Gmail account, uh, March through October of 2019. This is one that has already been confirmed as being associated with uh, Lori Vallow. Malachi, Gerber Life Policy, Life Insurance for Children, Phoenix Pet Service, Sell Service Dogs, Service Dogs for Sale, Offerings, Phoenix, Getting Rid of JJ's Service Dog, Wedding Bands Made of Malachi, Kennedy Elementary, Rexburg, Idaho phone number, De Define Possession. You should know that, Lori. You're the expert. Uh, Kennedy Elementary School Rexburg phone number. Uh, how to get the back seat out of a Jeep Wrangler. Telling, huh? Uh, how to, and that they, of course, YouTube that. The uh, user search Gilbert, Arizona News, and then wedding dresses and wedding dresses in Kauai, Hawaii. And while these are being presented, uh, the next witness, FBI expert Nicole Heideman, is being questioned by Rachel smith and basically is going over each one of these and how these things are relevant uh, she said that she was asked to conduct phone searches during the investigation and that she has uh, a powerpoint presentation with information that blake admits into evidence uh, the computer that she's using using is uh, not working so they bring up another computer they finally get it uh, going and uh, at this time Chad's attorney John Pryor is moving into the gallery and is sitting there taking notes. Uh, meanwhile the presentation is up and we're going through Chad Daybell's cell phone 
list um, showing how he saved names, everything from his uh, son to bishops to everything. And so we just have a long list of things going through call records associating Lori and Chad to phone calls around the time of certain crimes. They go through Chad's, Lori's, and Alex's phone records at this time, and it's just a very long, drawn-out thing. Uh, finally, uh, this is about noontime on Monday, and they do break for lunch at this time. Agent Heideman is still on the stand after lunch, and they continue to go through records. There's a few objections from the defense about what's admissible and what isn't. Both objections are overruled, and they continue on. Um, they center in on uh, the ordering of the wedding rings, how they attempted to order them on one day. They were out of stock. They attempted again on August 25th, and then finally tried to purchase it again on uh, October 2nd and 4th of 2019. So, yeah, they were trying to get them rings way before Tammy's death. So all this was just kind of laying the groundwork for what these people are doing. And then we're going over different uh, texts from Chad to Lori, um, talking about BYU's graduation on July 23rd. Uh, he's talking about how his son is getting his bachelor's degree. His son Adam is getting his bachelor's degree, and Lee and Joe are getting their associates. And they're all talking about them. Or These are both sons and son-in-laws. And Leah, of course, his daughter. And then they're texting each other about Kawhi and how he was going to go see the other side of heaven with his son. Just typical banter that you might talk with a, with a significant other. And then they ascertain because of movements and everything else that they have an approximate date for the deaths of the children. JJ died around September 22nd, 23rd and Tali around the same time. So all this is setting up a pattern of whose movements where. And at this time, the prosecution has no more questions for FBI specialist Heidemann. Defense attorney John Thomas then begins a cross-examination, just basically trying to tear down some of the things that the special agent had, had put up. Uh, but I think the FBI agent gave very good answers to all of those questions. After a brief prosecution redirect on some of the things brought up in cross-exam, he, uh, he is re she is released from the stand. But she will again have to remain under subpoena because they will be calling all these experts back in. Then the prosecution calls a special agent, FBI Special Agent Nick Balance, who was a member of the Salt Lake City uh, Division of the FBI, and he is part of the FBI cellular survey team. They basically break down cell phone data. He talks about how they have to go about getting all this information and that who the ma major carriers in the Idaho, this Idaho area was, of course, T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T. And then he talks about how cell phone towers work and how they're able to get pings and kind of measure where you may be. When you're calling on a cell phone, you're moving from tower to tower as you move, and if you text or call, it's going to bink off of different towers at different times, and this is how you can actually come up with geo-tracking uh, through cellular calls, even burner phones. If they can tie that burner phone to you through an email address and tie that burner phone to a phone call, you can be traced. The most telling thing was he's saying that there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 cellular phone records and multiple Google accounts associated with Lori and Chad, uh, much more than the 18 previously thought. And they began to analyze the movings of certain people, particularly Alex Cox, during the time they suspect the children died and were buried. And this goes on for several hours, and this is pretty much where they dismiss for the day. So we suspect that Special Agent Balance will be back on the stand this morning, Tuesday, and will continue with his testimony. So that's what I got for him, for you, a lot of goings and comings. I will uh, be back with you as soon as another update drops, and until next time, keep on crying.